Okay, welcome to Farm Radio. It's been a while since we produced a video. And so, actually we produced a video, but it didn't have the outcome uh, that I wanted to achieve, so I scrapped it. So, um, today we have a Mettler. Someone uh, approached us with this. It's a, uh, a scale, I'd say it's from the early to mid-1980s. And it works, but it's got an intermittent heat problem. I mean, I'm hoping it's just poor solder connections. I've never been in one before, but let's take a look. It does work. I've seen it work, and I've also seen it not work. And what I mean by not working is the display will go completely blank, but when it does warm up, it will say uh, tear, and uh, you'll be able to uh, do what you want with it. But uh, we're going to take a look at it. It's ice cold right now. I could plug it in and uh, have a look at it, see how it performs cold. I want to get it inside and uh, take a look at the circuit and see if we can just visually see a crack solder, cold okay, solder. Okay, so this joint. thing's been out in the back hall. It's probably like 30 degrees. So it's ice cold. And we're going to, it's plugged in. And I'll hit the. You can see it does nothing. But the display lights, when this, once this reaches a certain temperature, it will begin to come alive. So let's open it up. Okay, so the removal of uh, one screw on the cover reveals the internals here. And I don't know, I may look at this right off the bat, the uh, edge connector here. It's double-sided PC board circuitry, so cold solder may not be an issue, but I'm going to go over this carefully and see if I can uh, stir something up. I'm guessing the edge connector, maybe. All right, we'll see. We'll give it a, we'll poke around with the power on and see what we can stir up. Okay, I've removed the display panel. It's not the art card edge connector. And I do see one thing that is always suspect are these type switches. Everything I've worked on, I don't care if it's a washing machine, a printer, a microwave, jukebox, these switches are always, always suspect. And there's the date code on it, 8126. And judging by the way this thing has been acting, that's my first culprit right there. I may jump that and uh, turn this on and uh, jump it and see what happens. Okay, I have the switch jumped and I'm going to apply power here. And if this thing fires right up, it's still very cold, then I'll know. No, well, there's our power. And I still have nothing. There's a connection issue here somewhere. Of course it's on because I have it jumped. So I don't know who the culprit could be. Fuse, transformer, no. I've seen this work, so... I should verify that I have power here, by the way. Uh, what you don't want to mess with is this is the... Uh, calibrated weighing section. You don't want to touch anything there. I think we take some voltage measurements here. See, let's take a couple voltage measurements. Okay, we do have our 120 at the outlet on the input there. And this is, uh, of course, world power, so I'm guessing oh, zero, boom, boom. 110, 130. I don't know how this is wired. I'll look at this a minute. We should uh, 
I think the fuse is after. No, the uh, AC, that was after the fuse, so the fuse is not the issue. There is a switch here that he said he doesn't know what it does in the back. I can flip it either way, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. I want to see if I have anything on the secondaries here. Okay, without a schematic, this is kind of tough, but I do have about 30 volts here where it says 28, and I do have 5 volts where it says 4.6. I'm wondering if I could just move that IC there in the socket. So this thing's getting power. Here's some uh, electrolytics down there. Crystal. Hmm. I'll poke around a little bit. Okay, this thing is powered up. And I have nothing still. Now I have the switch jumpered and I'm going to momentarily open and close it and, and I have nothing on the display it, it, all the connections look fine I don't see anything outlandish nothing's jumping out at me yet uh, let's check the um, let's check the bridge over here there's our little uh, there's a little one amp uh, bridge rectifier there near those input caps. Let's see what the voltage is there. Okay, on this bridge rectifier there, I have nothing. I have like 0.5 volts, and over here there's another one. I have nothing over there either. I suppose I could check for plus 5 on some of the logic chips. I don't know them offhand. I have to look them up. But where is... Why isn't this thing waking up? Okay, I've removed the jumper. I don't know if you can hear that, but when I power this tear bar on, you do hear the hum from the transformer. Can't be the transformer itself here. That goes over here. This thing's getting no power. Something's going on here. Okay, I have like 7 volts across this one and like 35, minus 35. I don't know if I have my probe situated. It says positive down here. I'm assuming this is positive. That's negative, obviously. Um, European stuff I get tripped up a little bit on at times. Um, yeah, so this is... 470 at 63, so 35 is, I'm, I'm happy with that. But there's something else going on. I imagine the 35 is, could be for the display here. Um, Looks like a 4 megahertz crystal to run the CPU there. I don't want to get into this too much because it does run. Leave it on long enough, it will run. Two end transistor here. This has to be a noisy transistor. I Again, it's hard to, without a diagram, hunting in the dark here. Okay, now what I remember the owner saying is it was humming profusely, and he says, yeah, it does that, so it's only humming a little bit now. It's on. And here it says 28 volts. I'm assuming 10 and 11 are these two. Then it says 9.5, which I assume is these two. And then it says 4.6, which I assume are these two. Two, four, but now... I get about I get 5 volts on these two. I get about 35 on these two. But these two, the 9.5 or 9 yeah, 9 comma 5 volts. I don't know what that means. 9.5, 9.5. Uh I don't get anything on these two. Okay, take that back. I perhaps had to really scratch my probes in. I do get 30 volts here. 
I'm getting about 10 volts here and I'm getting about 5 volts there so this is supplying this board okay could be something as simple as that crystal there not allowing the CPU to clock and run because there's nothing on the display and I if it heats up it will it will run so yeah I'll try maybe some heat in a few areas power supply logic finger on it. I'm going to heat this up maybe with a lamp or I don't want to get the heat gun out but I'm going to heat. Let's apply some heat and see what happens because it will wake up. Okay I haven't had this powered up for too long before I start with heat. I did notice these are heat sink to the back chassis and they get quite warm which is obviously the regulators which but that's that's so hot you can hardly touch it I've certainly had some hours on them oh this is tough it could be any one of these capacitors could just jump some out. This is a 220, 2200. Oh, and the voltage can't be that high. Twenty five volts. Do some thinking here a minute. Jump the electrolytic and see what happens. Okay, I've jumped out the 2200 at 25 with a 33 at 3300 at 50 there. And the minute I turned it on, nice. Let's disconnect. I'll disconnect here. contact nothing capacitor contact oh beautiful let's put something in there all right this just happens to be a 2200 microfarad at uh, 50 volts and this is all ground right here. So I'm simply going to just tack the positive on and I'm going to scrape some of that cladding. I'm going to tack that right in there. Like so. Yes, I know what most of you are saying. You should change this one to, you know. But uh, if it ain't broke, I don't know. I may not fix Okay, uh, I've gone through some of my Radio Shack stash. I was going to put these 40, one of these 4700s at 35s in, but I came across the uh, this one, 2200 at 50, overrated for the voltage, which is good. It's the proper value. It's axial lead. This was mine or something I didn't care about. I could tack that in there as I was going to just tack it to there and ground. This is all ground, but we'll go ahead. I'm going to put this in just like so. Being double sided board, I don't know if I'm going to just hook and loop or a go, go through hole. I may just hook and loop. I don't know yet. Okay, there we are with the new cap installed. I looked and looked for a 470 at that high voltage, 63. The closest is a 470 at 35 and whatnot. I'm going to have to put an order in for that. In the meantime, I'm going to button this back up and return it. Um, I'm in contact constantly with the customer, so we'll put a parts order in and uh, just
just change that one out if so be it. Um, in the meantime though, we're going to run this thing and see how it does. I'm also going to put a dab of heat sink compound on that heat sink. There doesn't appear to be any on there. But, uh, okay. Okay, here we are partially reassembled and here's the test. Beautiful. I think you hit it once more to tear it. Not sure, let's put some weight. Everybody's back where they should be. Okay, now that it's reassembled, it appears to be operating properly. We turn it on. And I think you, it, okay, it tears, okay. And then you take and you place something on it. And there we have it. I don't have a standard weight here, standard weights and measurements, but uh, that's pretty good. Should put a, uh, I can't put a stylus pickup on it, but uh, yeah, that's pretty sensitive there, Swiss made. Pleasure working on. I know it was kind of quick and I'd like to do more, but uh, I'm going to run this back to the customer. Thanks for watching, and uh, that's the Mettler. Uh, very sensitive Swiss made uh, scale from about 1981. I do remember working with these. I was in the, uh, the chemistry labs and whatnot, and uh, I do remember the scale looks very familiar to me. Okay, so this comes in at um, 198 grams, it says, and it's uh, 299. So it must be 100 for the uh, packaging, let's say. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for watching.